This episode of Android Weekly is brought to you by Full Sail University. All right, so the irony of this hit me pretty hard. You know this guy? Alex Jones. He's a radio host, broadcaster, and the founder of Infowars.com. And if you don't share his political views, you might think he's a conspiracy kook. I mean, he's the guy who got into a shouting match with Pierce Bronson on CNN, suggesting that the British might come back to take U.S. guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. That guy. Now here's the bitter pill you have to swallow, is that his conspiracy theories have largely been right. And when it comes to privacy, Verizon has proven that that is true. Here we go. Now you might be thinking, Jace, this is nothing new. Governments and companies have been trying to gather personal data about us since time immemorial to use for their own nefarious purposes. But Verizon has taken this just up another level. They employ a cookie that cannot be deleted. This is a special Verizon cookie installed on Verizon phones that can be used by ad companies to track your personal data. It is a genuine cause for concern because unlike a lot of other tracking options, users cannot delete this cookie. Here's how it works. The unique cookie is known as UIDH or Unique Identifier Header. The UIDH, which is used to track users based on location, interests, and more, is something that Verizon claims they don't believe ad companies will use to send targeted data to consumers due to the fact that the identifier is frequently changed. But a discovery by a Stanford computer scientist reveals that it's not only possible, but it's already being done. So unlike other privacy faux pas, they're basically admitting publicly that you can't go into your settings and remove this or change the settings. They're gonna track you whether you like it or not, and that's all there is to it. Now on to happier news. March 1st is the date that HTC reveals their new flagship. HTC has just invited us to a mystery event scheduled for Sunday, March 1st. Now, there's no official indication that this will be the M8 successor, but realistically, there's no other phone that would warrant such a big event during this time of the year. The press event is set to take place the day before the Mobile World Congress, and that's fairly typical for a company that wants to capture as much attention as possible. The invite itself reveals no clues about what to expect from the phone, with just a starry background and a cryptic tagline saying, Utopia in progress. However, a few rumors paint the picture of a powerful Snapdragon 810 equipped device with a five inch screen and a sleek metallic build. Pretty much what we come to expect from HTC One's flagship device. I would hazard a guess that it's gonna be bigger than five inches. Can't wait to see it. Now we've been receiving reports that the Nexus 6 battery has been swelling. Multiple users of the Nexus 6 around the web have been reporting that the Nexus 6's back is coming unglued. Under further investigation, a Reddit user experiencing this problem checked under the back cover to find that the battery was expanding, causing the cover to come undone. Motorola commented to a Twitter user saying that they have been seeing a few devices come unglued. Some users are commenting that the battery is in fact expanding over a few weeks time, while others are saying that they're noticing it right away when they take the device out of the box. Now I've talked to a number of you Nexus 6 owners in the comments. Let me know, have you had this problem at all? Have you seen any problem with the battery or the cover? I'd like to hear about it. Who said the Chinese only produce cheap devices? Xiaomi has come out with two premium options. Last week, Xiaomi unveiled its high-end Mi Note and Mi Note Pro devices, packing in plenty of quality hardware at quite reasonable prices. We can see here a closer look at the Mi Note's steel chassis, port layouts, and a rather nice curved glass edge at the back of the handset. But Xiaomi has released a second gallery to show off its one-handed mode feature, a piece of software that is becoming increasingly popular in larger smartphones. Xiaomi's single-handed option allows the user to select between screen sizes of 4.5, 4, or 3.5 inch modes. Now you should know the Xiaomi Note is not the successor to the affordable Redmi Note. This device is a high-end offering with a 5.7 inch Full HD display, Gorilla Glass 3, a Snapdragon 801 processor, 
three gigabytes of RAM, a 13 megapixel rear facing camera, and a four megapixel front facing camera. It also sports a 3000 milliamp hour battery. Now the Xiaomi Mi Note Pro, which features similar design and specifications with the following improvements. A 64-bit Snapdragon 810 processor, a quad HD display, four gigabytes of RAM, and a 64-bit storage option. Now, for those of you who know me from XD Developers TV or How to Become TV, you'll know that I interviewed countless number of software developers. And what became painfully clear is that there's a huge gap in the industry between people who have the theory and education but lack the practical expertise. And that's where our beloved sponsor, Full Sail University, begins to bridge that gap. Offered on campus, the Software Development Bachelor's Degree Program teaches programming fundamentals through project-based coursework, allowing students to graduate with multiple completed projects under their belt. Now, the Mobile Development Bachelor's Degree Program offers on campus and online, teaches students how to develop apps and utilities through courses that cover both iOS and Android development. All students have hands-on access to technology from day one. They receive a laptop computer at an institutional discount along with relevant software and tools. Now for more info on Full Sail University's programs, you can go to fullsail.edu forward slash authority. Thanks for watching Edward Army. My name is Jace. I'd love to connect with you right here on Google Plus or Twitter. I read all my comments and app replies. I do respond to as many as I can, but I did want to answer a question that I get most weeks about what music I use in this show. I use a lot of different music, but most of you are referring to a composer named Android Gallagher. Did I say Android? I meant Andrew Gallagher and I have linked up his SoundCloud page below. Super talented guy. I use all of his stuff with permission. And I think most of you are particularly fond of uh, a piece he refers to as iPad Unbox Magic. Uh, I believe it was originally composed for my good friend, my fellow Torontonian at Unbox Therapy. Uh, but I use that with permission. Check out his stuff. Please use it in your own work if you like, but do give the man credit. He's very, very talented uh, and he needs to uh, make a living by his beautiful work. You don't want to forget about the beautiful work done by my brothers, my brethren in Android. Josh, Joe, and the Tech Ninja, Kevin, Lonnie, Chris, Gary, and Ash. All working real hard to deliver the best Android content on the planet. I should see you all next week on Android Weekly.